Greetings gamers, Lockwood here with another episode of Locks Picks. This week is all about Mad Max, the game that came out last year around the hype of the new movie reboot. I've been picking it up and putting it down for a while now and finally got around to finishing it. Mad Max The Game is an open world action game obviously set in the Mad Max universe starring, you guessed it, Max, who is on another struggle fest through the wasteland. The game is hectic and tries to keep the player interested with its fast pace, car combat, and a huge map full of objectives to complete. The gameplay of Mad Max is a mixed bag. At a very basic level, it's two things. On foot, it's an action brawling game, and in a car, a speedy destructive car combat game. You start out in the game and it gives you a tutorial by the way of early story missions. It introduces you to Max, his car, his mechanic companion, and a very large open world map full of icons that indicate objectives to complete. What the entire game essentially boils down to is completing objectives on the map like a coloring book. You complete these objectives, you receive rewards in the form of upgrade unlocks, and regular rewards of the game's currency, scrap. You use this scrap to upgrade Max and his car to take down harder objectives. One of the main drives to keep doing all this is to keep upgrading Max's gear in his car to see how crazy it can all get. It feels good to upgrade in this game because there are so many things to upgrade. You can upgrade Max's weapons, armor, and skills along with the upgrades you receive from leveling up and turning in tokens. The car can be upgraded in many different ways as well. The engine, exhaust, tires, armor, weapons. The neat thing is that the car upgrades often bring downsides with their bonuses. Upgrading your armor gives you much more defense but weighs down your car. Other upgrades can mess with your acceleration, top speed, or handling. The on-foot combat is somewhat satisfying, but also feels uninspired. They took the combat system from the recent Batman games and watered it down a bit for taste. You have a punch button and a counter button, a shotgun, shivs, melee weapons, and that's about it. You can upgrade to get combat skills, which most of the time just let you use shivs in different ways, but the shivs are disposable and you can't carry that many of them, so you end up hardly ever using them. To its credit, the action feels nice because of the visual and sound effects, but that's just a pretty drape over what is just simply average brawling combat. The car combat is what makes this game worth playing. As you drive around the wasteland, you can run into enemies or even convoys driving around that try and attack you. You can ram into cars to damage them, run them into obstacles, or take them out with your harpoon gun. All of this can turn out to be really chaotic when there's an entire caravan of cars trying to do the same thing to you. Cars have destructible pieces like tires, doors, and gas tanks, which you can target for quick kills. Your harpoon gun is your best friend throughout the game because it can simply pull the parts off of other cars if they have no armor, depending on what level your harpoon gun is. Upgrading your car and its weapons makes the car combat even more satisfying, giving you more options to cause mayhem in the wasteland. So let's talk a little bit more about the objectives. The game has four leaders that control different sections of the area map. Each time you complete an objective in a leader's area, the big bad guys control the area decreases and it gets a bit safer. The activities include knocking down towers with your car, taking out car convoys, defusing minefields, racing, and taking over bases. And of course there are stations with hot air balloons that you ride into survey areas, revealing the icons on the map around them because apparently every single open world game needs that. There are also salvage points where you can get some loot, but the scrap rewards are extremely insignificant. So the only locations we're salvaging are the ones that have upgrade parts. So you can do all these things and more, but you have to do them over and over and over again for the whole game. The big things making this game worth playing are the car combat and the slow trickle of upgrades. The car combat is fun enough on its own to make you forget about doing the same things all the time. For a while at least. Looking at visuals, Mad Max is a wonderful game to behold. Who knew a wasteland could be so good looking? There's a surprising amount of aesthetic variety between the different zones in the wasteland. The visual effects are all very nice, the explosions are great, the combat cameras shake and the screens blur during intense moments. Somehow all the browns and grays don't become depressing. It's a very bright game during the daytime. At night the colors cool off a bit. There are also sandstorms that appear which are intense experiences in part because of the visual quality. The audio also makes the game feel great to play. The cars are loud with engines revving and tires screeching. The melee combat has a nice visceral feel to it because of the visual and sound effects. You feel like you break bones every time you hit someone. The music fits the game well in an atmospheric sense. The intense moments are full of chaotic drumming and orchestras, but it does have a softer side which sets a subtle yet uncomfortable tone for the calmer moments of the game as well. The voice acting is well done which is great considering how hard it must have been to convincingly portray a bunch of crazed lunatics. The story of the game is standard Mad Max fare. 
Max is traveling through the desert, loses all the stuff to a local warlord, and has to get stronger in order to get his car back. All the while he's battling with his sanity in a world that is insane. They did try to shove in some terrible love interest story near the end of the game in an attempt to humanize Max and flesh out some more story, but by then it was too late for me to start caring. It felt rushed and forced because of that. Max's constant companion through the story is a hunchback, hero-worshipping zealot mechanic that takes care of your car. The big villain is named Scrotus, and he has a big horn-shaped codpiece attached to himself. The game is full of warboys and other crazy Mad Max characters that always end up being interesting because they're so weird. So while the plot itself is simple and not really noteworthy, this game and the series in general are more about the atmosphere and world building that a strange, adrenaline-fueled, high-octane, post-apocalyptic wasteland provides. You end up learning more about the world itself through historic relics you pick up and the strange characters you meet, which becomes the most interesting thing about the story. From a functional sense, Mad Max does pretty well, especially for a console port. The game runs well after the initial loading sequence, which is a bit long. There are plenty of graphics options to customize your performance. It seems to be well optimized. I was running at 144 FPS with a GTX 970. The UI does its job well enough. It's nice to be able to upgrade Max with a car from anywhere just using a menu. The car controls are great, but the on foot controls are worse. Max feels a bit floaty and multiple actions can use the same button prompt. So if you're trying to pick up a weapon in the middle of combat, you might end up trying to pick up loot instead and get yourself killed. Overall, Mad Max tries to do a lot of things with its wasteland of crazy activities. It has a big open world with things to do all around and secrets to find. Unfortunately, it ends up feeling repetitive because you end up doing the exact same activities throughout the game. They try and alleviate the issue with increased difficulty in the upgrade system, which does end up working for a little while at least. The car combat is absolutely the best part of the game, with the audio-visual elements really making the game feel good to play for however long it can keep you interested. Nothing else is particularly noteworthy aside from the fact that it's a well-ported console game. I would recommend this game to a few select people. If you like car combat, this is definitely up your alley. If you're a big Mad Max fan, go ahead and take a look. If you like open worlds filled with activities complete, this is your jam. Otherwise, you can overlook this title or buy it on a deep sale. Thanks for watching everyone! I'm trying to put out more content for you guys, and the best thing you all can do for me is share my videos or my channel. I also stream on Twitch and post on Twitter. Those links are in this video description. Please like or follow me so I can let you know what I'm up to and get you more game reviews. See you next time on Locks Picks.